Moving to a new place is always a challenge. When that shift also involves moving into a tiny house in a new community, a rural landscape, and going off the grid, that challenge is slightly more significant. And today we're about to meet an inspiring woman who took that challenge and tackled it head on. Hi Janelle, how are you? Hi Bryce. It's lovely to meet you and what a gorgeous spot you've got here. Yeah, it's beautiful and it's full moon tonight so it feels extra special to have you here. Oh well it's lovely to be here. Can you tell me how it is that you came to be living in this beautiful tiny house? Yeah, so I had something change in my personal life when I was living in Cairns and I felt like a new chapter so I headed south and did some house sitting in various places and ended up doing a house sit in Byron and that led me to having a conversation with a tiny home builder there and then over the course of about 18 months I went through a bunch of different designs with a couple of different builders and ended up building this one on the sunny coast and my girlfriend Sarah who owns the property invited me to live on her farm. Fantastic, yeah. and what a gorgeous parking spot it is. I mean, you've got views here that just stretch right the way into the hinterland. Yeah, so that's heading towards Kenilworth Bluff over there. Beautiful, mm. amazing views. And it's really cool that you get to share the farm with your friend as well. Yeah, so her and her husband and three kids live here. And collectively, we've got two dogs, about 15 chickens, a cat, and we sometimes have cattle and horses coming and going. And it's an evolving biodynamic permaculture themed farm that's just in the beginning stages. And Sarah's in the process of putting in big veggie beds for veggie boxes. And yeah, it's got a big, big vision. That's amazing. And how great as well that you get to live in this nice little micro community. Yeah, it's beautiful. So it's a private road and there's six different farms, which has created quite a close community over time. Yeah. And what size is the tiny house here? It's 7.2 long by 2.4 wide. And then there's a three meter deck on the south and a two meter deck on the east. Great. And can you tell me about the design of the home? Yeah. So I really love living outdoors and I have lived up north for a long time. And so a deck was really important for me. I had a four person sauna initially, which I built the deck around and I've sadly let that go. So now the deck feels extra spacious. <laughs> I've got my ice box instead for cold plunges. I love that I have it and I would also love to be using it more. <laughs> yeah, fair enough too. There's always time for it. Yeah. When I got the blinds put in on the deck, it created an additional room really. Yeah. yeah, especially here in Queensland, you have so much fantastic weather and it's so nice and hot. So creating this outdoor living space is essential, isn't it? Yeah, it's magic. Yeah, yeah. and it helps having a dog and just having people stay to have this spaciousness. And you've got the breakfast bar here as well? I do. So it's not really being used as a breakfast bar at the moment because I have this stunning view and I figure why put stools in and face inside. So it's become a pretty ledge at present. <laughs> but I do think in time with the screen that can be lifted out, it may be a space where food can be passed to and from and maybe a bigger table set up. And yeah, I have been entertaining with 10 to 12 people on the deck and even in the summer on the grass under the stars. So it is always evolving and I feel like the way I set it up and the multiple angles I thought about the design, I knew I could pick and choose throughout the different chapters how I would use the space. Absolutely. Yeah. Great to have that freedom. Yeah. And I love what you've done here with the tiny house as well. The materials are really beautiful. I especially love all of this gorgeous warm timber. Yeah, I really love timber. I love the warmth and the softness of wood, but I also didn't want a heap of upkeep. So I've just put it on the southern side, which is really quite protected by the deck and a little bit on the east. And there's quite a lot of upkeep that's needed on the eastern side just due to weathering. So yeah. I kept it pretty simple. And lots of windows here as well, keeping the house beautifully connected to the outdoors. Yeah, that was such a process in the constant evolving design because I wanted a lot of airflow so that I didn't need aircon or heating. And I also was trying to figure out whether I wanted two doors and, you know, visitors staying in a clinic space for my naturopathy and as all tiny homes are, a constant compromise, I feel. But I'm happy with the amount of light. Yeah, so you work from home as well? 
Yeah, so I sometimes see clients a lot on Zoom and then a little bit on the deck. And then I also have a clinic elsewhere. And can you tell me a bit about your naturopathy practice? Yeah, so I've been a naturopath for about 13 years and I run retreats and also consultations with clients. And I just think the tiny home, which is called Seedling, which is an offshoot of my business name, Seeds of Health, I feel like there's this simplicity that a tiny home offers, which can be replicated in the way that I practice, because I really believe in the wisdom of the body and the wisdom of nature and pairing everything back so that you're confronted with, I guess, the truth of the situation. I love that philosophy because you're so right. We do not lean into nature and nature's simplicity enough, do we? Mm, not at all. And you're totally off the grid with this home as well, aren't I you? I am. So I've got a 10,000 litre water tank and solar. And I, yeah, definitely went through a few clunky phases in the beginning, but that's all been sorted now. And I feel even more connected to the, I guess, the ebbs and flows of nature by not being reliant on anything outside of this rectangle. And you've got the outdoor shower here as well. I always love to see those. Yeah, I actually only shower outdoors now. <laughs> Why wouldn't you? I know. So I have a shower inside and... I think until I got the tin up around the shower, I just felt a bit exposed. But yeah, now I just always want to shower outside. It's very freeing. Oh, you just can't beat an outdoor shower. I know. Well, your home is absolutely gorgeous. I especially love this wonderful outdoor space you've created, but I am very excited to see the inside. Can we check it out? For sure, come on in. Thank you very much. Hey, this is beautiful. I especially love all of the timber in here. It's just such a welcoming space to walk into. Yeah, it adds warmth, doesn't it? I decided to leave all the VJ panelling natural, which was a tricky decision because I did paint it myself and I was umming and ahhing, what do I paint white and what do I leave natural? And I actually love the warmth that's stayed with the natural timber. And the layout in here is gorgeous as well. It's very open and spacious. Yeah, I often find when people visit, they comment on how big it feels inside, despite the second loft. Initially, I had the couch facing the door as I entered because I had a desk on the wall. And I feel since I've moved the couch, uh, it's opened the whole kitchen space up. And it was actually just a paper collecting space. I didn't use it. <laughs> and now your paper collecting space has moved into the loft. It has, yeah. I am not collecting paper up there as yet. I'm actually really enjoying my new office space in the spare loft. I completely understand because it really is nice to have that separation and a dedicated space where you can work inside a tiny house is just so important. You've got the futon up there as well? Yeah, I do. I wanted a space for visitors that wasn't in the entrance, so I didn't want them sleeping on the couch with bags and people coming and going. And so I love having an additional space for visitors or even myself if my folks come and stay. I'll give them the main bed if they're just here for a night and I'll move over to the spare loft. And that was actually a score at the op shop. So I was stoked to find something that was super small that also offered practicality because when I was looking at a lot of small couches, they were even just too large for the amount of time that I would use it. Yeah. And same with the bookshelf up there, I couldn't find something streamlined enough. So my mum and I just pulled that together with some timber that we found at the reclaim yard. Good job, you've yeah. made a nice feature of it. Yeah, it's practical. Yeah, it yeah. sure is. And always important to have more storage for books. I agree. <laughs> and your kitchen, you have got a huge amount of prep space here. Yeah, I do. I really love cooking and I felt like bench space was really important to me. So I tried to separate it somewhat fluidly between the sink and the gas cooktop. And yeah, I'm happy with how it's turned out. And this little space on the end with a stool underneath is, I had had the idea of maybe being a little convenient workspace too, but it really just gets used as an extra chopping space. <laughs> Fair enough too. Yeah. And especially with your profession, I know food and nutrition is obviously very important to you. So the kitchen must have been an essential design element in this home. It was, yeah. And I remember the builder telling me multiple times that I think you have too much bench space. I'm like, I don't. <laughs> I'm sure. And you've got loads of storage in here as well. Yeah, I love the storage aspect. So I've got my little herbal dispensary tucked under the stool and then I've got, yeah, plenty of space for slow cooker, pots, a whole bunch of beautiful dry goods in the pantry and like a stash of camping gear in the end. 
And I really like what you've done with the storage baskets up there too, because it just adds a really nice visual element. It actually looks really good the way that you've built those in. Yeah, thank you. That was a hilarious chapter. The number of times that I ummed and ahed between multiple baskets and what would like easily fit in the space on the eye and what was practical. Yeah, so I am stoked with the end result. And that's your wardrobe, is it? Part of the wardrobe, yeah. And then I have some hanging space next to the fridge. And then I've got jumpers and things under the couch and a few storage buckets. And you've got a full-size fridge and a good-sized cooker too. I really love cooking. Yeah. So I love the four burner. And I originally had the fridge and also the couch and my bed with the three items that I kind of built the tiny home around. And yeah, having a big fridge, particularly in the summer in Queensland and just being able to put ferments or ripe fruit or just anything or when visitors stay, having a lot of space in the fridge is practical. I completely agree. Yeah. And over here, it's so neat what you've done with the map on the wall. I really love this map. So I feel like I've had limited space where I can put artwork in the tiny and I love travel. I'm an avid traveler. So I felt like this was a practical kind of visual that I could refer to with my joy of travel as well as having a little piece of art. Yeah, I love that. Such a nice memento. Yeah. And then your bathroom is down the end there. Can we take a look at that? Yeah, for sure. All right. Oh, this is a lovely design. Having the Louvre window there is such a nice touch, eh? It keeps the bathroom really connected to the outside. Yeah, true. And also, I love the airflow just for a, a wet space. Yeah. This is definitely one of my favorite rooms in the house. I think it's the mirror that I brought from North Queensland that was framed by a friend and yeah, just the timber features and the coziness and the plants. I just really love this space. Yeah, the hexagon shape's really nice. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I found it under an old farmhouse that I used to live in. Really? And I've just repurposed it and framed it. Lovely. Yeah. And you've got a shub in here. I love seeing <laughs> these in tiny houses. I've never heard it called that. What do you call a it? A shubbin. Uh, just a, a shower bath. A shower bath? Oh, a shub is a much better word for it. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a really nice feature. Beautiful colour on the wall as well. Yeah, I like the softness of the colour and I'm a ocean lover, so I feel like it adds a tone of that. For sure. Mm. And you've got the composting toilet here as well? I do, yeah. I love that I'm off grid. I love that feature, but it has been through a few different chapters with different external weather events. Right. Yeah, I feel like I'm getting the hang of it now though. Yeah. And you've got the washer here as well? I do. I really love not having to go to a laundromat. So that's kind of a non-negotiable for me. It just makes the home feel totally self-sufficient. I absolutely agree. Yep. And a nice big vanity space here too? Yeah, it's practical. I guess it became that big because of the washing machine and then the cupboard. It can easily fill. So I just need to stay on top of the uh, putting away of goods. Yeah. All spaces can though, can't Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's a practice. If you build it, the things will come. Yeah. <laughs> Very true. And upstairs is your sleeping loft. Can we check that out? Yeah, for sure. Let's go. Thank you. Oh, what a cozy space this is. I'm a big fan of the Live Edge headboard behind the bed. Yeah, I love it. Um, the same friend who framed my hexagonal mirror made the bed frame and I owned it before I even thought about building a tiny, but I wanted a really low bed. So it was neat that it fitted into a loft space and I didn't have to chop any legs off. And I like that you've kept the loft up here simple and comfortable. Yeah, I really feel like the headboard can get a little bit lost with the VJ panelling, but the timber is what I'm all about. So. Yeah, I wanted the bed to sort of be the feature. And you've got the skylight up there as well, which is always a nice loft feature. Definitely. The first night I slept in the tiny, I saw a shooting star. That was a bit special. And I do love having not only the airflow, but also the ability to see like the full moon last night and stars and even just to hear the pitter patter of rain. Yeah. yeah, it's beautiful. And between the skylight and the side window, you've got a good amount of cross ventilation up here. Yeah, between the kitchen windows and the side windows, I feel like there's plenty of cross breeze. Definitely. And so how long have you been living here now? Two and a half years, just over that. Great. And how's yeah. the tiny house working out for you? I'm loving it now. It did take a little bit of settling in, not to the tiny home living, just the position of the tiny home, moving to a new community, moving quite a way out from the coast and yeah, it's had its challenges. Yeah. What would you say the greatest aspect of that challenge was? I think just isolation on so many levels, possibly timed with the global aspect as well as moving away from a community that I knew 
But I really feel like in the last eight months, there's been a real strength of community build around me. So I think it was possibly just time as well. I think so often when we talk about home and the concept of home, we can get lost talking about the material aspect of it and the walls that we build around ourselves. But such a big part of home is the people. Totally. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. yeah. So I've got some beautiful neighbours all around me, but I feel like I was searching for that larger community. Yeah. 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 And now you've found it? Yeah, I really feel settled here. I labelled it seedling, as I mentioned, and I felt like that had so many reasons. Not only did it tie to my business and I felt that my clients may use the space, but more to the point, it was a fresh new start for me. And I feel like it's come with so many challenges, but now that I'm over that challenging hump, it represents a whole lot of strength and also creativity and the process that I went through with various builders to try and nut out a functional space that had a warmth to it, but also something that spoke to my personality. Yeah, so I'm stoked with the end result. And can we talk about the cost that was involved in building this home? It came to about 120 when I finished and I've added things like a second solar battery and various things over time. So you've been living here for a couple of years now, you're well settled into the land. What does the future hold for you now? Interestingly, my partner's moving in next week, so that'll be an adjustment, mainly sorting out storage and things like that, but it feels really exciting. Absolutely, that'll be a big change, won't it? I think just sorting out clothing is probably the main thing. Everything else will be somewhat easeful. Yeah. But yeah, that'll be a new chapter. Absolutely, that'll be exciting to see how that works out. Yeah, for sure. Well, you've just built yourself such a beautiful home here. I am so excited to see the way that the space will now change as your partner moves into the space as well. And to see what you do here on the land is going to be very exciting. Thank you so much for sharing it with me. Thanks, Bryce. My pleasure. This is such a special place that Janelle has created for herself. But I love that building this tiny house came with a realization that home isn't just the house. It's the people, it's the place. So much more goes into making a space feel like home. And you can really tell that she has beautifully understood that and created now a wonderful place for her to be in life. <laughs>